what is up guys welcome back to the channel again welcome back to a new vlog guys i am currently here pumping fuel i just finished pumping at three dollars a gallon i hope you guys can see it there i did i did pump six hundred dollars guys i did pump six hundred dollars anyways i am not loaded believe it or not i am leaving now miami florida going up to atlanta empty guys empty sucks but i gotta do what i gotta do it's time to go out and work um, I was not able to find anything here good. I do have a load that I'm going to be picking up tomorrow in Atlanta. Um, at 6 p.m., guys. I am leaving today so I can get ahead of time. So I can make it there tomorrow before 6. So I can rest. You know, take my 10-hour break. And then, you know, continue my trip after I get on load. I'm supposed to deliver this load in San Antonio, Texas. Monday. Monday. Um, Friday at uh, like around 9 in the morning. Tomorrow's Wednesday. I'm supposed to deliver this load. Friday like around 9 in the morning I should have plenty of time after San Antonio I'm probably gonna go back down to McAllen and pick out a load coming to Atlanta or going up to New York we'll see what I do I am not trying to come back home at least for another three weeks or two weeks and a half at least um, the reason for that is because it's so slow down here in Miami that I don't want to come back home and then not have anything to leave again so nothing guys well like I said I hope you guys are doing good and let's start this vlog
morning guys so um, we weren't able to get far enough last night or I want to say we did got far enough to be honest because I made it to Lake Park Georgia for those of you that are not familiar with the place um, this is exit 2 of uh, I-75 which is not, not that bad to be honest considering the time that I left um, due to you know just leaving late so uh, another ladies and gentlemen I just finished checking the truck I stopped here I slept for uh, I slept for two hours and I'm, I'm gonna continue the trip now I just finished checking the truck making sure that my tires are good making sure they don't have any issues at all and um, I'm gonna continue it's actually in construction here the area is actually in construction which sucks because it's really not uh, too defined on what is it that I'm supposed to do or what is it that I'm supposed to go at, but I guess we'll, we'll figure it out, right? But um, yeah, it is what it is. Other than that, um, I have currently 251 miles to go to my destination, and I should be getting there if everything goes as planned uh, around 4.20 p.m. That's good because I'm supposed to be loading at 6. So, uh, yeah, we'll see what is it. We'll see how the trip or how the rest of the trip goes. That classic boy. Okay, so I made it to my destination here in Atlanta where I'm gonna be loading. I'm gonna leave the truck here for about 30 minutes because I'm gonna go ahead and cross the street and go and uh, eat some, some lunch because I have not eaten anything today. I'm, so, I'm supposed to be loading over there, the entrance over there. I already did my check-in, but the female at the door said that I'm supposed to come back at 7.30. I don't know why. I don't know why brokers always do that they put a different uh they put a different time on the raycon so you could be there way earlier regardless you guys know that i drove all last night i only slept for two hours and i kept driving this morning so i'm not in a rush to get loaded i don't want to leave here at 12 at night neither but i'm not in a rush to get loaded my appointment supposedly was for 6 30 and the female at the, at the at the gate said that i'm supposed to come back at 7 30 but check this out um the best part of the load is that supposedly this was a dry load and she's telling me to come back with my trailer set at 65 degrees what do you guys think about that now i gotta call a broker and let him know that it's not a dry load that it's actually a uh reefer load because he has to pay more for that you know dry loads usually you can charge a little less but when it's a reefer load you gotta charge some more so nothing guys, with all that said, let's go have some lunch and let's continue to wait and let's see how long it takes them to load me once I go in and I park. What type of shit is this? Waffle House is closed, limited hours. Open 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. What the hell? Damn, for real? I gotta have some McDonald's? Oh man, oh well, I guess I have to have a salad. Just got out of McDonald's. Freaking sucks. They didn't have a uh, Waffle House was closed. McDonald's didn't have any salad due to COVID. I don't understand what the salad have to do with COVID, but that was part of the of their deal. Hey, but I did get a uh, strawberry lemonade, right? Check out, check out the cutie waiting waiting on me check out the duty waiting on me I don't know if you guys noticed in the previous clips last night um, I have the last yellow light of the left side of the trailer and the bottom light the red one the, the you know the, the 
the reflects on the on the floor those two lights back there are turned off and i know they're not bad it's just that they're, they're turned off i guess that the the ground or something went bad on it let me show you guys which ones i'm talking about and they run in series so that's why i know that this is the ground because when i when i did the installation i got the i got the ground and the power from that same light up there or from, i want to say from the wire harness that was coming from the front of the trailer so this light right here and the red one down there down right there and the red one down there are completely off but it's so hot right now guys that i don't want to deal with this right now later today when i'm parked in my dock I'll probably mess around with there but right now it's so hot that i'm just gonna go inside the truck and uh, relax because it's crazy hot anyways before i do that what i am going to show you <clears throat> so you guys can see now in the daytime how the motor is looking motor has 4,000 like 4,500 miles on it right now after the rebuild uh, open 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 damn it's super hot <sighs> look how we're looking everything's looking good I don't see any oil leaks That's a little bit of dust, but that's normal. But other than that, let's see how this side is looking. <clears throat> this side is looking good too. Um, I was gonna say something about this, and I totally forgot what it was right now. Something that that I something that I didn't mention last time, and it did happen to me. All this clamp right here, I have to buy a new clamp because this clamp right here, the old the old one that I had wasn't tiny, so there was a a little bit of oil dropping from here. Um, what else? What else? Oh, and then the spacer up here. I didn't I didn't tie one of the bolts over there in the front as well, and it was dirty. It was dropping a little bit of oil, but other than that, I mean, it looks good now. I tie everything up. I cleaned everything up and we came from Miami to Atlanta and I don't see any oil anywhere now or nothing maybe I should tie this right here I'm not sure yeah guys we're looking good my next step at least down here under the hood is to clean up all my chassis i don't know if you guys can see it it's dirty um i do have some overspray on the chassis but the good thing is that it comes off because before i started to paint the motor i threw wd-40 on the chassis for that you know i, I threw wd-40 on the chassis and on the firewall but i haven't been able to wash the, tr the truck you know so i still have to get on that side uh, two brand new of these because the ones that are orange they look disgusting super horrible I have to get two brand new for the other side I went looking for them one time but they didn't have them um, see super nasty super ugly those are old I need to change them out what else I want to paint that tube up there I think I told you guys I want to paint that tube up there I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I should paint it black or if I should paint it yellow like the motor and if I do paint that black then I'm gonna paint this as well black and then this one as well black let me know if you guys rather me have this yellow or if you want me to have that black i seen it black and black looks real nice when everything is cleaned up right now it's all dirty but when everything is cleaned up it looks real good um oh you guys follow me on instagram you guys will know that i uh changed out the the seal 
Let me see how it's looking in here. Everything is looking clean, everything is looking good. Yeah, I changed out the seal on the bearings. Um, now that I was home, I did that. I changed out the seal. The seal was leaking. Um, that's about it, guys. See? see? I don't know if you guys can see a little bit of the oil spray right here. All that comes off. I just haven't been able to wash the truck. And once I wash it, if it still doesn't come off, then I'll just paint it. But I want to paint all that and maybe paint the back of the chassis as well. See how uh, my chassis is looking ugly. I gotta paint that, make make sure that looks nice too. It's all it's all it's all it's it's all step by step, guys. It's it's a lot of work and it takes time. We have to go out and make money. We have to go out make money. We have to be home, spend time with our family as well. You guys know that I do have a baby in the way, so I have to divide myself in a lot of uh, different, you know. I have to divide myself in a, in a lot of pieces. Anyways, we're looking good here. Let me close this hood because I'm already sweaty. Let me turn on this truck and go inside and just wait for my appointment time. So I can go inside and uh, park my truck. Let me show you guys the light that I was talking about. I, I showed you, but see these are on, but this one's off. And then the red light that I have down there is off as well. It's only one dot. Usually when lights do this because there's a ground somewhere around, 
that it's not good at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, you know, take the light apart, see what's going on, and hopefully I can fix it before it gets dark. The reason why I waited for this time was because, let me take off this mount. The reason why I waited so late because it was so hot earlier today that I didn't wanna, I didn't have the strength to deal with the hotness, you know, over here in Atlanta. So let me take this apart and let me see what I find out. So I found where my problem came from, and it actually came from this light. The extension that goes from this light to this light, or the piece of wire that goes from there to that light, was broken on this light. The ground, like I, like I said, was broken. Um, don't mind all this, I have to fix all that. I actually have my, uh, my connectors and stuff like that right there. Um, I'm also gonna heat shrink it and put tape on it, just so I can be extra secure. And obviously retie up everything and remake it, you know, make it look nice just the way it was. But other than that, thank God I found my problem. It was an easy fix. Let me just get it fixed and that's it guys. We're gonna be having some lights again. Or at least all of our lights again. Okay, so light is all set. The one that lights up the floor is good to go as well. Um, I'm gonna clean all this or pick up all my stuff and the only thing I want to do now is I saw a green light I still have not get a red light that have still not started to load me um, I'm gonna get a rag and I'm gonna get some water. I'm gonna wipe down all the lights that uh, You know that they're that that are facing down to the floor because even even when I wash the truck They don't wash those lights down there. So I'm gonna take the time and I'm gonna um, clean them up so They can shine more and you know look a lot better in the floor but other than that, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so a lot of you guys are always asking me uh, about my blue lights. How is it that, how is it that sometimes I have red lights, and how is it that sometimes I have blue lights? Um, some of you guys have thought that they're filters. They are not filters, actually. My truck does have blue lights. Uh, I don't know what they're called. I know Miami Star has them. Or they're out of stock now because I haven't been able to buy any more but I know they sell them they're like 40 bucks a piece they're super expensive that's probably why I haven't bought any more but um yeah these are dual color they turn red and they turn blue they also have them they turn red they turn green red and yellow red and white they have a bunch of colors um, when I got the truck I wanted to go with the blue I like the blue so that's what I put on there um, then here in the bottom the ones that lit up the tanks i'm pretty sure i did a video on that yeah i did i did do a video um these are not the same lights as these right here these are three quarter lights some some of you guys call them the chicken lights those are the same lights that i have here on the trailer the three quarter lights except that those i have one red one blue one red one blue one red one blue and so on and so on and i did the same thing um here in the bumper the same thing i have one red one blue one red one blue one red one blue and this is the look you get now for i was gonna say something now and i forgot the oh these three quarter lights they do have them dual color that miami star does have them they're always out of stock but they don't they, they used to sell them at least that's for sure uh, but they're like 15 bucks a piece or 14 bucks a piece and they have them the same you know they, they turn red and blue or yellow and blue and then yellow and red you know they have they have that dual tone whatever color you you want um currently I, i've been to miami star a couple of times looking for those lights because i wanted i actually wanted to put the same lights in the panel before i installed them and i also, I also want to put those lights right here in the filter you guys know the ones I have here in the filter, they, those in the back are red, and then the ones in the front are yellow. And I wanted to buy the dual ones as well, so I can put them there in the filter and in the visor. Just so I can have that whole theme, you know, of the truck being blue, every every light, but... I haven't been able to come across any more of those lights. I wanted to do the truck first, so then I could go ahead and jump into the trailer, and do the trailer as well. I wanted to do the whole thing as well, but... Yeah. For the ones that are asking, they are expensive lights. They're like 40 bucks a piece, but 
I think they're worth it. Um, these are illegal. They're blue. You should not have blue lights anywhere in any car or any truck. I know some states enforce it more than others. But, um, yeah, you should not have any blue lights. If you have yellow right here in the back, I was told that you can have the yellow ones on. The only thing you cannot do is have the yellow ones on if you're bobtailing. That means if you don't have a trailer, you cannot have those yellow, the yellow ones on. You're supposed to turn them off. But if you get the dual color, you get the red ones and the ones that turn yellow, and those look nice. Yeah, just wanted to uh, put that out for some of the guys out there that are always asking me about the lights. I wish I had more in the visor and in the filters, but I haven't been able to come across anymore. But well, there you go. So for everybody out there that's trying to get into the reefer game, these are some of the things you gotta think of. It's the waiting time. Believe it or not, waiting time here, um, it's a lot. See, I've been here since one o'clock. My appointment wasn't until 6.30 in the afternoon that the Raycon says it. Uh, they moved me over to 7.30. I don't know if that was them here, if that was the actual broker, I don't know. But it was, it was only one hour. I wasn't gonna bitch about it or anything like that. But now I currently been in my door for four hours and a half now. For someone to come and knock at my door and say that I have to move doors because um, I was in door 153 and they cannot load me there for some reason. So I had to move over to door 147. I don't understand why. It's only a few doors away, but it is what it is. Anyways, I still have the green light. I already parked it. I have the green light. Boom. I just got the red light right now. So that's good. Um, I should be out fairly, fairly quick. Nothing, guys. Hopefully, it don't take longer than they have already. So let's see what happens. Another common question that I do get a lot is people don't really understand, they don't really see how big my truck really is. Um, I'm gonna compare it to another truck that I have next to me. It's a big truck as well, but he is not stretched. So look, look where his sleepers at compared to where I'm at. See, um, my truck is not the biggest truck out there. There's actually bigger trucks. There's actually a YouTuber or there's a truck online that I think he's called uh, Project 350 or something like that. Imagine, I'm 315 and he's 350. You can imagine how big or how bigger he is compared to me. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think he has a way smaller sleeper than I do. So that looks even bigger. And then this place is actually not that big. See? You can tell there's trailers up there. But to be honest, what makes it simple is the spacing they keep between each trailer. So that spacing there allows me to pull out and pull in without any issues at all. I didn't even have to move my tandem front to uh, to repark in the new door. So that's good. Anyways, I was able to, to talk to the guys inside. <laughs> I went right through the... I moved right, I went right through the dock right here and I talked to them and I, and I asked them if they could please be careful with the walls and if they could give me two singles in the front. For the ones that don't know, my fifth wheel cannot be moved. The only thing that I'm able to move is my tandems in the back. So, yeah, yep, he's already loading me, thank God. Hopefully in the next half an hour, that should be good. All right guys, here you go, here you have the lights, lighting up the mud flap like I always have it. Um, I just moved my tandems to the front. We are finally done. It's almost one o'clock in the morning. I am sealed. I am good to go, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hit the road and let's see how far we make it.
stay here guys so we got up now a little while ago we are um, in uh, Hammond Louisiana I got here actually at 7 in the morning it's like I don't even know what time it is now I, I actually think I overslept anyways it is what it is I have currently 497 miles to go to my destination that's around I want to say eight hours non-stop I'm supposed to deliver tomorrow by 9.30 a.m. I have plenty of time, I can even sleep. There is no appointment, it's just first come, first serve. I have to like eight o'clock in the afternoon to deliver. I am not trying to do it, I'm trying to go ahead and deliver early so I can head out from San Antonio down to McAllen. Hopefully, I can load up tomorrow, Friday as well in McAllen going to New York, but we'll see. I don't have nothing yet. Um, tomorrow, I'm gonna start looking once I, I'm done unloading. With all that said, yeah, I just finished doing my pre-trip inspection. Nothing, guys. I had lunch already as well. And all I can say is let's start pushing miles to the back. guys so we made it to Vinton Louisiana exit 4 on I-10 um, diesel here is at two dollars and ninety cents it is a lot cheaper than everywhere else but the good thing is that they take mud flap code here and with the mud flap code I get it for two dollars and sixty two cents yes you heard right two dollars and sixty two cents just by me fueling up here I should get if I'm not mistaken it should probably I should probably be saving around 30 35 bucks the truck was low on fuel already and the trailer is low I only have a quarter tank so yeah guys I currently have like five hours and a half to go in five hours I have like 300 like five miles I have like five hours to go to my destination in San Antonio I have plenty of time it's like 10 30 now I'm gonna keep on driving um, and I don't know, probably stay in the last rest area right before San Antonio. Um, I don't even know where I'm gonna stay at. I'm probably gonna look at the map before I go and I get there to San Antonio. I'm gonna look at the map to see if I can stay at the location. If I can stay at the location, then that's what I'm gonna do. So nothing guys, let's finish pumping fuel and let's continue pushing miles to the back.
story last night and uh, I stopped. I stopped at mile 661 going west on I-10. I actually stopped to uh, refill my tanks. destination here in San Antonio as you can see I had to unhook um, it's actually a very simple place to get in it's not complicated at all I should be out of here in no time they are, are unloading this truck here before me and I'm the next one so I should be good to go pretty pretty soon I actually have to go down to McAllen as fast as possible because I actually have a load already going back down to Florida I was not able to find anything going to New York a week that I can't go to New York but I was able to find and pick up a good a very good load actually 10,000 pounds uh, with two stops McClenny and uh, Cocoa I should be done Monday night in Cocoa, in Cocoa Beach Florida um, after that I'm probably gonna go up to Jacksonville or something to pick up a load and try to come back to Texas we'll see I'll keep you guys posted but other than that I'm just gonna wait to see how long they take here and as soon as they're done, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead, back the trailer in, hook everything up, and go straight to McAllen. All my stuff should be here, which they are. Um, they left a little mess, so I have to clean everything up. Make sure that, let me check something real quick. Make sure that I'm that everything is clean before I pick up my next load. See, check out. See that right there? That means that they they, they dried the pallets on the wall. Um, could have been now when they were loading, or could have been when it was being loaded. This is why I want to get the skid plates. These are skid plates, but these are not as strong. I want to get the aluminum skid plates. 24 inch high and then I also want to get the the e-tracks on it so I can you know manage two look at these bangs right here look I don't know if that was right now or from before but regardless what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this back some more right now and eventually whenever I go whenever I go ahead and I do my e-tracks I'm gonna tell them to put a piece like that down there and a piece like that up there as well so I can have three bars like that boom one on top one on the bottom and one in the middle Alright guys, I'm done. Let me clean this up and let's go to San, to San Antonio.
let's go back down to McAllen and get our load going back to Florida. Okay guys, so I finally made it to my destination where I'm gonna be loading my new load going back down to Florida. Um, before I do end this video, I wanna take a quick second and thank you guys all for the love, for the support. You guys are killing it. Uh, we just reached, I know it may seem like a small number to a lot of you guys, but to me, it means a lot. We just, we're over 6K on YouTube and we just reached over a thousand subscribers as well on Instagram. If you guys are still not following me, don't forget to do so at Florida Truck Riders. If you guys have not subscribed to the channel, don't forget to do so as well like that. You guys do not miss out on anything that I do. With all that said, once again, thank you guys all for the love, for the support. Peace and keep on trucking.